having access to, to primary care is really, really important to me. Otherwise, if I, if I feel that I can't get access to that, I get more panicked and more anxious and, and that kind of gets into this kind of downward spiral on my, on my health. I lost trust with the service and I lost trust because I felt that the service I was getting was not appropriate. the only person with learning difficulties that thinks I won't be believed. I just didn't exist for him as a person. I just existed for him as a, as a mental patient who was troubled. Two big themes that came up from all the research we did on the investigation were problems with access, finding it difficult to actually use the primary care service. That was the first point. And the second point was what's called diagnostic overshadowing. That is simply that people finding that because they had a mental health problem or a learning disability, that was what was seen, that was what was treated, rather than also seeing physical health problems, seeing the person in the round. When people come with complex needs, unless they can actually engage and, and meet on sort of open terms, um, and you can deal with these simple bits, there is no way you're actually you, you're going to be able to go any further and deal with the more complicated, um, more delicate bits that, uh, of, of the stuff that they're bringing. Well, I'm on quite a range of medication with the diagnosis of bipolar disorder. And when I had my first GP, when I moved into the area where I'm living in now, um, he just took the prescription from my consultant psychiatrist and I just put in repeat prescriptions and it was never reviewed. I mean, he didn't even take my mental health problems seriously because if I went to him with the mental health crisis, and it really had to, to be pushed to do that, he didn't take that seriously either. I mean, honestly, he used to kind of sit me down and offer me a cigarette and smoke one himself and send me home. Um, so I was trying desperately to move GPs, but because people with serious mental health problems sometimes have difficulty in finding a GP in the first place and getting on a register, the practice that I wanted to move to basically thought, well, she's got a GP, end of story. I did finally manage to register with this new GP and part of the registration process was to have a physical, a full physical examination. I mean, you, you had it as you registered, you just went through and saw the practice nurse. And part of the physical exam was, for women, was a breast examination. So she did this and she, then she suddenly looked very worried um, and she said she had to go and get a doctor to um, examine me. Anyway, the doctor found this big lump that would have been very difficult for me to find by myself. So within another five days, um, I was admitted, and then they came to tell me before they did the operation that um, the test had proved positive for breast cancer, um, and also that it had spread. I never had a physical examination from the first doctor, ever. Um, and I did feel extremely angry with him I thought that if it had been detected earlier, then I, the treatment would have been much shorter. It was a feeling that I'd been let down, and also I felt that he would not have treated me like that if I didn't have a mental health condition. I did have some symptoms, which I told him about, um, to do with the spread, like um, loss of weight and things like that. And I suppose he just thought loss of weight was, well, what do you expect? You know, they all have eating disorders. He made me feel ashamed of myself, you know, for, for wasting his time. The last time that I actually visited uh, my GP, I was greeted with, Oh, what do you want? And I thought, fine. <laughs> I don't think uh, doctors are actually 
uh, really aware of just not what they say, but how they actually say it, that can actually be the difference between a person with learning difficulties telling them what is actually wrong or actually um, not telling them. I, I, I pick up on how the receptionist speaks to people. Um, um, and it might, uh, what, it doesn't matter what their health issue is, it's the tone of voice. When they get to me and it's, and what can I do for you? Um, you've just actually had a few mature conversations with other general public. I'm the same. They're in the front line. Um, receptionists. And their one-off statements um, can be the difference between um, having health care from a primary care point of view or not having any at all. Our learning difficulty um, gets in the way of actually health professionals seeing us as people first. It is the quickest way to actually gain respect. And if you have respect and you have trust, that can be the difference between getting your diagnosis right or getting your diagnosis wrong. The first thing any health professional or GP could say to me to build my confidence in them as an individual is to actually say, right, um, I have no experience in communicating or working with people with learning difficulties. Haven't got a clue. Can you help me? You're the expert in this field. Teach me. Mm -hmm.